Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hello. We're going to be looking at Similitudes 9. Supposedly the last Similitudes in the scripture, right? Yep, it's Similitude 9, but it's a quite a long one. Yeah, I think almost uh, 300 verses. But So we're going to break this down into a few sections. Today we're going to cover the first section, uh, which goes about what? How many verses? That's 1 through 12. And But we're going to take, we're going to do it bit by bit, piece by piece, and work our way through it the same way an ant would eat an elephant, because it is pretty huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> what we'll do is we're going to go through the first 12 verses here, but I will I'm, uh, hopefully I will remember to put links in the description or put uh, cards at the end where you guys can find some uh, good handy links to maybe some other videos or some other classes that will help you with similar to 9, talking about the stones and the tower and uh, the virgins. He, he finally tells us who the virgins are in similar to 9, but that's way on down the road. Um, and 1 through 12 is mostly an introduction. The greatest mysteries of the militant and triumphant church which is to be built. So he's talking about the church, the true church, not the uh, Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. T Doug's church down there with that steeple on top. But we're talking about the church, the big C church. All right, let's look at verse 1. He says, After I had written the commands and similitudes of the shepherd, the angel of repentance came unto me and said to me, I will show thee all those things which the Spirit spake with thee under the figure of the church. For that Spirit is the Son of God. Okay, here Hermas is referring back to uh, the beginning of commands when the angel told him to write um, the commands and similitudes. And after Hermas had written them down, um, then the angel of repentance came back to him. Yeah, and so, and, and if you look at the last section in the book, it told Hermes, it says, And having shown me all these things, he said unto me, I will show you the rest in a few days, which to me means a few years. So there was a few years break between Hermes' understanding, or maybe our understanding, but there's, there's a break between the time that he told him the other parables and the time that he's going to get this parable here. Yeah, that was, he said that in Simitus 8. Um, that he was going to come back to him in a couple of days. A couple of days. But, you know, I will, I, I'm sitting here looking at verse 1, and I'm wondering if this is a similitude at all. Because if you look right here, he says, after I had written the commands and similitudes. So he's already written the commands and the similitudes. So I'm wondering if, what, if this is actually a similitude at all. Or is it something else? Hmm. It's definitely a parable. It's definitely similar to the similitudes. If you guys got to check our class uh, that we did last on similitudes, he was talking about the the rods, right? Wasn't that the willow tree? Yeah, um, the, the rods. The rods. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I don't know. It just jumped out at me that maybe this ain't a similitude at all. Let's see, what else is in here? It says, And the angel of repentance came unto me and said unto me. Now, this angel of repentance, you want to tell them who that is then? The angel of repentance came to Hermas in the figure of a shepherd. And he is teaching Hermas all the things that Hermas has to do in order to make it to the, the goal end of uh, being part of the tower. All right, the angel of repentance, according to the Encyclopedia of Angels... An HD guide with nearly 4,000 entries. The angel of repentance is the archangel Uriel. I'm um, looking on back to look up who Uriel is. He says, Uriel is the fire of God. One of the seven archangels. It says that Uriel holds the keys to hell and will do away with the gates of hell on judgment day. He is the angel that Jacob wrestled with in Peniel. Legend has it that as they wrestled, Jacob and Uriel merged and became one. Alright, so that, that would mean that Jacob is the angel of repentance. Okay. Okay. If, if, if this is true, now I, I don't care point to the King James Version to say that at all. Okay, then go ahead, Stephanie. Okay, I was just saying that the angel of repentance um, is actually the uh, angel that came to him in the form of figure of a shepherd. Yeah, the angel of repentance is the one who's part narrator in this story. This is the one we've been hearing from, you know, 
that's been talking to Hermes and basically teaching him everything that he's been taught. He's been coming from the uh, the angel of repentance. I think what's one the most interesting things in um, number one is it says, for that spirit is the son of God. So he's talking about uh, the spirit in vision. Yeah, when he was in visions, he was talking to the church and that church figure... Uh, that he was talking to, yeah, so he's saying was the spirit of the Son of God. Mm-hmm. All right, um, ready to go on the two? Yeah, mm-hmm. And because thou wert weak in body, it was not declared unto thee by the angel, until thou wert strengthened by the spirit, and increased in force, thou mightest also see the angel. So here he's telling him, because he was weak in body, and I'm I'm thinking from my understanding, from my studying, he's talking about um, not necessarily his um, his limbs, but he's talking about um, uh, Hermes' mind, that um, he was not only uh, afraid when the angel appeared to him, uh, Her Hermes had shameful thoughts. Hermes uh, was, remember, he was lusting over the lady. Um, and he's saying that because you were um, uh, weak, ashamed, afraid in your body that this angel did not appear to you. But now that you are strengthened, now that you know more, now that I've shown you more, um, now the angel has been revealed to you. What do you think about that? Well, he had to be strengthened by the commands. You, when we were going into this, Visions was the first book, and he was speaking. He was actually in a vision, or he was in a trance, and he was hearing from the church figure. And then the second book was the commands, where he went through all of you, you know the uh, the commands or the mandates there. Where, like you said, he would have learned stuff about not having uh, doubtful thoughts, not being angry, not being sad, and stuff like that. And so that's what it would have been where he would have gotten his strengthening from was when he would have took it on those those uh, when he would have started you know uh, uh, following those commands. And I think that's what it says, what he says, words uh, strengthened by the spirit. Right. And then, so now that he has been strengthened, he has a little bit of power. He can hear directly from an angel now. Right. It's like he's giving him uh, baby food and now he's ready to eat uh, adult food. Yeah, and that's the way all of us are along our spiritual walk. We just did a class a little while ago talking about the guardian angels and one of the coming out of the third testament of the Bible. And one of the things that it said in there was once we have um, progressed or once we have evolved spiritually, then we can you know start to understand and feel that guardian angel that has been along with us the whole time. And so I, I think everybody has to go with go through what Hermes has to go through and that strengthen himself through the commands, through the understanding of the scripture and then he'll be able to hear we're, then we'll all be able to hear from angels directly. Yeah, well that's basically how it works, how uh, you know, how we're not when we, the Lord will give you a little and see you know, what you can do with that and then he'll give you more and, um, and then he'll give you more. Alright, yeah, yeah, so you know, and like I said, because we were weak in the body, if we if he had to put all of put all of it on Hermes or all of it on us at one time, you know, it it, it, it could be a little bit overwhelming. Right. You think about your spiritual journey, at some points it felt overwhelming anyway. And he was just giving you spoonfuls of, you know, what you needed to know. Imagine if he had been, you know, force feeding you, you know, from a water hose or whatever, you wouldn't have been able to keep up. Right. All right, let's go on to verse 3. He says, For then indeed the building of the tower was very well and gloriously shown unto thee by the church. Nevertheless, thou sawest all things shown unto thee as it were by a virgin. Well, in visions, um, the church, which we now know is the Spirit of God, um, showed Hermas like a pre preview of the church, preview of the tower, right? And I remember how the spirit, the, the lady, um, is what he referred to her as, um, kept saying, you're so ignorant, you're so, um, why don't you know? And so when 
it says by the virgin, I'm thinking it's more like childlike, innocent. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I guess what I saw, virgin. I'm, a, I'm thinking about those 144,000 people that's, you know, the 144,000 ers that's supposed to be virgins, and I'm wondering if there's some type of connection between those two. But I think you're right. I think, I think he's telling him that he was, you know, kind of immature, kind of unaware of what's going on. Um, he has hadn't really, you know, he didn't really know a lot, so he was kind of kind of pure in, in his thoughts. Even though he was ignorant, he was kind of kind of pure at the same time. Right, because he kept saying, well, if you don't tell me, how will I know? And, and things like that, yeah. All right. And what he's talking about here, he says, for indeed the building of the tower was uh, very well and gloriously shown unto thee by the church. The same, similar to the same, and I don't remember if we covered that one at all in, in Visions, if we cover chapter 3 in Visions, but... Um, it's basically a similar story, or if not the same exact story, with a whole lot more detail that we're about to get here in Similitudes 9. You get, it's, it's talking about stones, it's talking about the tower, it's talking about how you had angels that and, uh, uh, and other individual angelic figures that were carrying the stones and putting them in the tower. And in, in this Similitude, we're just going to get a lot more detail. Mm -hmm. Ready to go on to 4? Mm-hmm. He says... But now thou art enlightened by the angel, and yet by the same spirit. But thou must consider all things diligently, for therefore I am sent unto thy house by that venerable messenger, that when thou shalt have seen all things powerfully, thou mayest not be afraid as before. So he's talking about now again that he, um, he's, sort of I guess grown up matured more that he can understand and um, that he won't be afraid you remember here Hermes was afraid when he showed him the um, the, the the monster yeah in uh, the last what is it section four of visions that he showed him right. a a uh, parable or like a um, figure of the tribulation a big monster that came in and basically was threatening and Hermes and, you know, Hermes was able to defeat the monster by, uh, what is it, putting on, uh, putting his faith in the father. Mm -hmm. And um, he was actually able to defeat the monster and get past the monster. And that was, you know, something telling us how it is that we will survive the tribulation. You know, it's not through our money or not through our houses or our possessions or even, you know, what we know or who we know. It is going to be that we, you know, have faith in the father, in his word. In you know his plan that we will actually survive the tribulation. So he's telling him now that you're matured and now that you're enlightened more, that now that you know more, now um, you won't be afraid of what's about to come, what I'm about to show you. Yeah, he says, for therefore I am sent unto thy house by that venerable messenger, that when thou shalt have seen all things powerfully, thou mayest not be afraid as before. Yeah, I think you're right. He's he's uh, not really going to be scared. All right, you ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right, verse 5. And he led me to the height of a mountain in Arcadia, and we sat down upon its top. And he showed me a great plain, and about it twelve mountains in different figures. So now we're getting ready to start talking about the mountains. Yeah, he's going to... He's going to it's, it's the thing about this similitude is he keeps us in a little bit of suspense. He doesn't really tell us what the mountains are until later on, right? But in this section here, he's kind of going to run through them real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of like that um, um, class, like I said, we just did on the willow tree where the different mountains and the different stones and different stuff represent us as a people, as the elect, as the chosen. Uh, more specifically, is talking to you guys who are the chosen that are going to survive the tribulation and how you will fit in this tower. Some of you guys aren't ready to be placed in the tower. Some of you guys are still angry. Some of you guys are still doubtful. Some of you guys are still slanderous and envious. Some jealous. of the traits, jealous and different yeah. stuff that you're going to have to, 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 to get over. You're going to have to um, have to fix before you, be, before uh, be, I ain't gonna say before you put in the tower because you remember we learned that you know even once we mm -hmm. put even once they're put in the tower they're gonna be struck again. Right. They right. can still have cracks and stuff, but you know you're still gonna have to go through another uh, 
what judgment? another trial that's yeah. the tribulation he's talking about where you know, the way i understand it and i know i'm jumping ahead of myself kind of you know um I know I'm jumping ahead of what the story is talking about, but it seems as though he goes in the this 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 angel here um, and the other figures involved. You have a lot of angelic figures involved, but they go into these mountains, which represents the children of Israel, maybe even the bloodline Israel, those people who actually have blood ties to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he chooses from these people first. And he allows them to go into the tower, uh, having gone through these 12 uh, virgins or these 12 virtues, where they learn stuff like long suffering and patience and the fear of one father and faith and power and different stuff. And then they're allowed to go into this tower where they sit and rest kind of comfortably for a while until the tribulation comes and the Yehoshua HaMashiach comes in the form of a venerable angel, or the top angel, and he examines each one of these stones where it's like he pulls them out, like he pulls each one of you out, and then he takes a rod and whacks you. Now, to me, that's the tribulation. And some of these people who thought they were okay and thought they were fit to be in a tower, when they start going through the, the floodwaters of the tribulation, talking about hate, talking about um, envy and greed and war and all of those things that are coming up on the world once they are touched by those different events some of those people will actually find out that they're not as solid as they thought they were some of those people um, uh, will find out that they have a lot of hate in their hearts even still mm -hmm. and, and it's going to have to be weeded out before. Yeah, and, it, it, that, and then just to carry on what happens then, those people who are found, you know, in bad shape then, uh, being, like I said, the mountains, the bloodline Israel, um, will actually be removed from the tower. And then he goes to the plains that we're going to find out, and he starts to bring people from the plains, which, rep, which to me represents the Gentiles and everybody else. Those drafted in. And those grafted in, and then he starts replacing the individuals that were not acceptable to the tower, those that you know fell out in the tribulation, will be replaced by the multitude, or replaced by the Gentiles, or replaced by those that, like you said, those that are grafted in. Hmm. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, this is going to be a long chapter. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of information in this chapter, y'all. So y'all keep Stacy encouraged, so she can actually keep it going through your comments. Let her know, you know, keep, like you know how to encourage people. You know, it, it's, it's, this thing has a lot of verses in it, and, you know, it's going to be some days when, you know, somebody's not going to want to do some classes, whether it's her or me, and you guys can encourage us through your comments, and we appreciate that. All right, we're ready to go on? Number six, yes. Number six. He says, uh, the first was black as soot. The second was smooth and without herbs. The third was full of thorns and thistles. The fourth had herbs half dried of which the upper part was green, but that next the root was dry, and some of the herbs when the sun grew hot were dry. Okay, so is he referring to actual people? Yeah, these are, the, well, hmm, not, not, not yet, not yet, not yet. Um, these are the mountains from where the people come from, like their dwelling places. Like these mountains represent a group of people because you remember later on he's going to go into these, these mountains and start pulling out stones, which represents the people themselves. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, the first was uh, the mountain that was full of soot, black. Uh, the second was without grass, without trees. It referred to it as herbs. Uh, the third was full of thorns. This was, I think, of briars, like blackberry bushes, uh, things like that. Number four, uh, the herbs were half dry up uh, to the green, green, with green roots. That means, like, they were dry on top, but they still had, I would think, like a steady foundation. The roots were still green. Fifth is number seven. So. Yeah, and I'm looking here at my notes here just to give you guys a little bit of spoiler alert without going into these. Um, the blood that's black is pitch, and, and you guys, like I said, stick around till you get to the cards at the end. I'm going to put up a link to um, the class we just did on the willow tree because it's very similar, right? Yeah, it is. It, it's where these, where these, um, these mountains and these stones represent individuals. The blackest pitch ones are believers and apostates or blasphemers. 
the ones, what do you say, bare with no vegetation, mm -hmm. these are hypocrites and teachers of wickedness. They have no fruits of righteousness. What was the next one? Uh, thorns and thistles. Thorns and thistles. Uh, riches are the thorns and thistles are uh, involved in uh, many business affairs. Um, and then it says the half dry ones are the double minded ones, which only have the Lord's on their lips. And we're going to find out this in, in, in later on in the book. So you guys come back and, you know, uh, check out some of the classes that we post up in the future. Hit that bell button down there and you can get the classes that, as they come out. And also, as we said in um, the one with the Ross, um, look for yourself in it. Yeah, and here you have to look for yourself in these. You know, it's real easy to, to uh, be the one who's want to be on, a, I think it's the 10th mountain, 11th mountain, the 12th mountain, which are the good mountains. And there, everybody's going to want to say they're there. But the thing is, like you said, we're going to be struck by in this tower by this tribulation again. So if we squeeze by the angel of repentance and be sitting up proud in this tower and then find out we don't have all of the virtues we need, we're, we're going to get drugged off. By, um, there's some wicked women in this thing too that's going to drag these people back to the place where they came from and uh, let me tell you they have a strong pull these women do have the ability to pull you back where you came from if, if it's hate, if it's anger if it's uh, frustration or whatever and you haven't conquered that they're, they're going to identify you and they're going to take you back happily yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be singing and cheering <laughs> while they take you back to hate land. Right. Yeah, that ain't that ain't a good thing. Are we done with that? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's go on to numbers verse number seven. He says the fifth mountain was very rugged, but yet had green herbs. The sixth mountain was full of clefts, some lesser, some greater, and in these clefts grew grass, not flourishing, but seemed to be withering. Just reminds me of a class that you did a couple of days ago where you were doing, um, you were separating about the churches, the different churches. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically the same. It's basically similar how, you know, these individuals are in different groups. Now, it, it has its differences, you know, though, you know, that, that what she's talking about is um, Revelations chapter 2 and Revelations chapter 3. But, you know, there is a lot of similarities, you know, between how these people have these different characteristics. And in that video, I argued that, you know, Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3 was talking directly to the elect, the chosen, uh, who are expected to, you know, go on and survive the tribulation and inherit the earth. Well, I'm saying the same thing here, that, you know, these, these people, these stones, you know, that he's talking about are going to represent the people that are going to make it. Not necessarily those who, you know, are blasphemous right now, don't really care about the Father or inheriting the earth right now. They have no intention on, you know, uh, going any further. They plan it, they plan it on, you know, dying during the tribulation. You know, a lot of people, you know, they plan on dying before the tribulation ever starts. If you ever talk to them, you know, they, they need about the tribulation and how things are going. You know, their, their ultimate plan is to be out of here, you know, i.e. dead, before anything ever starts. He's not really talking about those people. He's talking about those who's going to stick to the end and inherit the earth. Do you have some information about the fifth and the sixth mountain? Um, well, actually I do. It says, um, the green but rough are faithful but hard learners. Um... These are these, these these are people you see you see a lot of these people over there on YouTube maybe myself included I, I'm a, still a bit rough but these are individuals who you know they may have good information to share with you but if you ever try to teach them anything they're 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 not going to accept it well you know I I did a video and, and just to give an example of myself I did a video not too long ago. And the individual came on and said, hey, you should go check out, you know, Brother Wilson or so-and-so. And, you know, I got, I took a little bit of offense to it because I'm like, why? You know, why? What are you telling me I need to go talk to him for? You know what I mean? Am I, am I doing something wrong? Am I missing something? Why, what do you mean? So these guys are a bit rough. And if you ever come in contact with these guys, take, be mindful that they have been trained this way. You know, they are 
the, 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 the guys who are expected to help us through this tribulation, they're not like the rest of us. They're not going to run over to T.D. Jakey or the Reverend Pastor, Deacon Dr. Doug or Kenneth Culpable and just start listening to their sermons, you know, with, you know, wide open ears enough. These guys are rough. They've been used to, you know, uh, hearing, you know, lies from other people and they're very cautious and they don't want anybody getting in and, and steering them wrong. So, and, you know, but, you know, you can be a little too rough. The ones who are full of clefts are holding things against one another or backbiting. What was the, what was what was the other one? Well, was that's that it? yeah, that's it. It says um, grew grass. This is talking about the one with clefts. Grew grass, not flourishing, but which seems to be withering. Okay, and the reason why I know we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but what this is talking about, they, they have clefts in them, meaning they're backbiting, they're slandering each other, they're talking about each other. Even though they may have read the Bible a whole lot of times, if you remember uh, Corinthians, I think it says, if you don't have any love, then your teaching is going to be like tinkling symbols or, you know, clashing, you know, whatever, clashing symbols or whatever. And so that's why these people aren't flourishing. That's why they aren't doing any good. They may be hearing a good word, you know, on, you know, Sunday morning. But then on Sunday evening, they're hearing the same person do some slandering, doing some backbiting, and it's kind of slowing them down. That's why the, the grass is not flourishing. Right. All right, we're ready to go on? Number eight. Yep. Number eight. The seventh mountain had delightful pasture and was wholly fruitful, and all kinds of cattle and of all the birds of heaven fed upon it. And the more they fed on it, the more and better did the grass grow. So was this a good mountain? Um, let's see what I have in my notes here. Those on the seventh mountain were cheerful with cheerful vegetation. These are simple, innocent, and blessed individuals. They are clothed with the virgins. So yeah, this is a good mountain. Um, ready to go on to nine? Yep, number nine, the eighth mountain. The eighth mountain was full of fountains. And from those fountains were watered all kinds of the creatures of God. The ninth mountain had no water at all and was wholly destitute of it and nourished deadly serpents, very destructive to men. So the eighth mountain was uh, good as well. It says springs. These are the apostles and teachers who teach truth and righteousness. Yeah, this is a good mountain. This is one of the, one of the first good mountains is, is mountain number eight. And like I said, everybody's going to want to hide on this mountain and say, hey, I'm, I'm mountain number eight. I'm mountain number eight. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but you got to be careful. We got to learn what we need to learn. You know, this ain't, this ain't, you know, about glamour or vanity. The Father takes this stuff very, very seriously. And if we somehow sneak by without taking on the commands, without taking on the virtues, without learning who it is that we're supposed to be, once, like I said, once the floodwaters start rising and your family starts hating on you and, you know, you lose your job or whatever and things start to get rough, your true color is going to come out. Right. Your true color is going to come out. Right. All right. Whereas eight had all of the springs and, you know, did all of the watering of all, all kinds of the father's creatures, number nine had no water. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, with spots. He says, these are the ones who, these are the ministers who plundered the widows and gained profit from their ministry. Mm. These are the people that's getting paid off the ministry. Right. This is why, you know, I don't monetize my channel or, you know, ask people for donations or even ask people for their tithes money that they actually don't owe me, according to Leviticus. I was listening to it the other day of how much you guys are actually supposed to be paying me for this. But you, you, but you know, it's you have to be cautious because you don't want to be part of, you know, you don't want to be found on a ninth mountain, and that is people who are making a profit out of the ministry who are getting paid for this. Right, right. It's one thing to um, to be doing the 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 Lord's work; it's another thing to be getting paid for it. Yeah, and. You say it talks about widows. Uh, yeah, well, you know, a lot of these churches, you know, they're full of willow. They're full of these widows, these women who don't really have a man in the house to help them stay logical. You know, they they go down to these churches where, you know, you have this preacher there 
who, you know, is looking good, smelling good, and sounding good, telling them stuff that is really only designed to get their money. It's really, it's all, all he's really interested in is getting paid, getting, getting the tithes money. And he's not really teaching them anything. He's not showing them anything. He's not as much as giving them uh, any of the healing balm that the Lord has blessed them with. He, he ain't even trying to heal them at all or figuring out what he's supposed to be doing to, to heal their, their ailments. But he's collecting their tithes money every Sunday, you know, and then, you know, doing with it what he will. Right. These these are the Knife Mountain people. All right. You ready to go on? Deadly, um, deadly serpents and destructive to men. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's a it's it's a wicked mountain. Got serpents and ain't got no water, but it got snakes on it. Wow. Them mm. snakes out in the desert are pretty tough. <sighs> Them some bad snakes out there. Okay, number 10, the 10th mountain. The 10th mountain was full of tall trees and altogether shady, and under the shade of them lay cattle resting and chewing the cud. Okay, so this is a good mountain. Uh, yeah, 10 is the good mountain. These are the old overseers, friendly to the servants, pure in conduct, good to strangers, those in want and widows, glorious and as long as they persist to the end, they will be members of the tower. Okay. Reading my notes, like I said, this is this is on a little bit head. Uh, some of this stuff is coming from you know a little head in this same chapter. You know, I'm not just making this stuff up. And again, um, I'm, I'll put a link at the end or in the description where you guys can go in and listen to the whole book, maybe the whole chapter, and that way you you can read ahead. You know, by the time we put some more classes out, you already know some of the other stuff. But I promise you, I've read this thing so many times and over so many years that I'm going to be able to tell you some stuff that you ain't heard before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in this book. Yeah. If you start reading between the lines on this book right here, and you're going to find out a wealth of information, I promise you. All right. Number 11, the 11th mountain. Number 11. The 11th mountain was full of the thickest trees. And those trees seem to be loaded with several sorts of fruits. And whosoever saw them could not choose but desire to eat of those fruits. So the Levis Mountain is another one of the good ones. We got um, 8, 10, and the next one is 11. Yeah. yeah. So let's see what it says about 11. He said this is the one with the fruit trees. He said, these are people who suffered for the name of the Son of God and laid down their lives, suffered and did not deny. These are some these are people that was actually killed for the faith. That's what it means when it when it talks about fruit. Right. It's talking about people who actually had to die for for the word of God. Well, we uh, learned about that when, you know, when he did the rods, it was talk about the buds and then it was talk about the fruits. Right. And, you know, this 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 is the highest you could go in this lifetime as far as the father is concerned. You know, running off your mouth on YouTube videos is one thing, but having to go before the magistrates and they're threatening to cut your head off for the word of God is a whole nother. Mm -hmm. it makes me think of the disciples. Yeah. So a lot of those guys, Stephen, he would have got his fruit. Well, all the, almost all the disciples would have got their fruit. Yeah. You know, and it's because they were martyred. Almost all, I think, they try to say that John uh, somehow died of old age on Patmos. Whereas the rest of those guys, you know, they were they were killed. Right. And the last one is the 12th mountain, which is what we would consider the best mountain. Well, let's read it. He says, the 12th mountain was altogether white and of the most pleasant aspect. Itself gave the most excellent beauty to itself. Right. Um, I just want to say that, you know, when you're reading, when you're listening to this audio, um, the reader of this audio will probably uh, has some kind of, I guess, like racial thing where he's saying the white mountain you're, is the yeah, good white folk. You're talking about that audio version over there on YouTube. Um, if you put in the Shepherd of Hermits on YouTube and look for an audio book, there's one on there about four hours long. And it is a dramatized version. It sounds really, really good. Um, it helps explain. It, it at least helped explain a lot to me. 
but it is corrupt. There is some stuff in that audio book that I ain't going to say it's a mismatch because I went through the whole thing. I actually sat down one day with the audio book on the headphones and uh, the William Wake edition, which comes out of the Lost Books in the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden, which is the one we're looking at here. I actually went through and looked at it word for word, and they didn't, they did not do anything uh, that I would call a blatant error or completely incorrect. But they put some words in there that make you make you scratch your head for a minute. The one Stacy is talking about, if you if you you know you hear this, it's like what he what he says is that. Uh, the people are born black with black bodies and black skin because they are wicked. Right. And those people who are white or have white skin are pure and holy. Mm-hmm. That, that comes from one of those religious groups. I can't remember which one it is, if it's the Mormons or somebody like that who actually believe that. That's what they teach their people is that um, black people are evil. Black people, yeah, they teach the people that that being born black is a curse for wickedness. Wow. They teach that. And so what they've done, I don't know which religious organization this is, but they actually went in and took the book of Hermas and um, uh, I translated it, I almost say, almost, they translated it in a way to suit their religion. Right. So you have to be real careful. Right. I think it's a it's a good translation when you're trying to get understanding, but just a couple of things that they said to, like you said, make you want to scratch your head when they say that the Black Mountain is representing black people who are evil, and the number 12, which is the Good Mountain, represents white people uh, who are the good ones, and it just doesn't mean that at all. Yeah, it don't, it don't say that. As you, you, are you looking at what it actually says here, if you guys, I'm sure if you guys have heard that other translation, you know what I'm talking about, because it kind of ticks you off after you think about it for a minute. But, you know, it, 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 it I, I say, you know, listen to that version for entertainment purposes only, if you're mature enough to get past that point. I mean, he's talking about stuff like breast-shaped mountains, and he didn't grab the venerable angel by a sack, and all kinds of stuff his dude would be saying in there. It, yeah, it, it, and remember, remember that part where he, where he says you're foolish? And then it sounds like he said you're full of ish, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, I, you're I was foolish. like, turn my head, like, what? what and it sounded like he told him that you're full of ish, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't say ish. He sounded like he said yeah. a whole other word. But, <laughs> yeah, so so um, be careful of that. All right, uh, Stace, I think that was all we were going to cover, unless you want to go on. Yeah, that was just the uh, introduction of, like I said, the 1 through 12 um mountains but we're going to go into further a lot 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 more detail of these mountains and as we said before look for your own self you know see about the different things you have to um to to brush up on in order to um to to be a part of the tower yeah don't don't be like the reverend pastor deacon dr doug and his flock over there talking about how y'all ready for the tribulation and ready for the rapture and ready to go to heaven and all of that stuff you you may not be as ready as you think you are you know expect until you meet these 12 virgins and pretty much know their names by heart you know it's it's is um and should we show them the 12 virgins right quick Sure, show them, show them the 12 version. I was listening to it the other day, and, and, you know, I got a lot of work to be done as well. This look like it right here, guys. We're going to go ahead, before we close it out, we're going to go ahead and tell you who these 12 virgins are. These women that are going to have to become a permanent part of your life in order for you to dwell in the tower. Um, uh, this is jump, It's the same chapter, but it comes all the way down here to, uh, it kind of starts in 141. But in verse 142, he says, the first is called faith, the second is confidence, the third power, the fourth is patience. Okay, now these are the, these are the, the strongest four. They're going to have uh, equal and opposite, you know, um, uh, virtues there. But these are the strongest four. And then the rest of these kind of come from them. He says, the rest which stand beneath these are simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, Truth, understanding, concord, and charity. And this is where you want to pull out your dictionary and actually look up these words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and as you were saying, these are these twelve women will and want to come and live with us and be a part of our lives every day. But if we do something to upset them, they will definitely leave us in those other 
will come in and yeah. live with us. Yeah, they're very meek. They're very humble women, and any kind of some any kind of trouble, they will flee from us. You know, if we you know start to you know start to be a little bit impatient, that little that that angel of patience will run from us, and she'll be gone. You know, so we have to be real careful and stay on our P's and Q's. Or you have the opposite and equal women that will actually, like I said, these are the women that will take you back to the bad place. It's like they'll grab a hold of you and they'll pull you back to where you came from. If you used to be a person that was hateful, they're going to take you back to hate land. These are found in verse 144. He says, of these uh, four are the principles. First is perfidiousness. The second is incontinence. The third is infidelity, and the fourth is pleasure. Mm. Right, and these are opposite to the other ones. Right. Yeah, you can you can put them line for line. We did this once. We actually drew this out one time. The whole family did, and you know they're 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 actually you know opposites. Um, and they are followed by. Yeah, and then the lesser ones, the ones that are, that are born from these guys, if you if you can't get over these four, these other four, these other ones, these other eight are going to make a part of your life too. He says, the rest of which follow are called thus sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a good class. I mean, it's just so much... Um in Hermes that oh it's a lot it's just so much I mean it's like a book of life yeah it really is just in case in this one book yeah it was supposed to be part of the New Testament it was supposed to be in our New Testament Bible it was at one part considered um, canonical I meaning they, they would have included in the 66 books but they over time the Catholic Church fell out of love with it and they actually uh, put it down and didn't include it in and the in the books, in in the sixty six books. But I say all it say we're supposed to have all of this information. We're yeah. Supposed to know this already. Mm -hmm. Look at this part right here, and then we're gonna close this out. It says the servant of God, which carries these spirits, talking about these evil spirits, shall indeed see the kingdom of God, but he shall not enter into it. So and you know remember the father, remember the the, the um, remember our savior said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's already here. It's a place that we can dwell. It's kind of like a state of mind. But if we have, you know, if we carry these wicked spirits, we may be able to see that kingdom or understand where that kingdom is at, but we won't be able to live there. We sort of like Moses. Yeah, sort of like Moses. Yeah, yeah. And of course, that was a living parable. And he mm -hmm. had a real kingdom, whereas our kingdom, like I said, it's more like a state of mind. Right. Whereas some people now live in the kingdom of heaven. While other people live in the kingdom of hell, you know, even though we may live in the same house. Right. Simply because you of these 12 wicked yeah, virgins. Exactly. Exactly. All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and close this section out. Like I said, y'all leave your comments. Um, this is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot to this uh, to this book here. So it may be in 10, 12, 13 parts. I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a lot of verses. <laughs> All right. Y'all anything else before we close it out? Stay. Um, just stay tuned. Um, like I said, this is a good book, and I guess if you could grasp Hermes, I believe, if you could grasp Hermes, you really could. Um, just what it says, enter the kingdom of heaven, and, and you know. And you can stay there. If you can get yeah. this message, yeah, you can actually, you know, start to take advantage of the fact that the Messiah has returned already, you know, and he is our king, and he will direct our paths and keep us you know safe and you know take care of us and give us the blessings of our heart and all of that kind of thing but we have to take on the good virgins first right. and, that, and that's why at the end of our end of our thing what do we say uh, patience power continence and faith that's where that's where this comes from there's patience power continence and faith we teach virtues yep shalom shalom Hermes Academy Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.